What you see right there, looking at this particular chart, and if you're reading ahead on your own, you already know, is increases in bone mineral density in one year in a randomized controlled trial involving postmenopausal females. One year. And what's even more fascinating about it is these are fairly common supplements which are available on the open market. Per se, melatonin, strontium citrate, vitamin D3, and K2. Even better, within the realm of reason in regard to dosaging, which we'll understand more in a second. Now please bear with me, we're going to have to work from the full published study itself. There wasn't the public release, and in public releases they tend to simplify the title. For example, in this case, you would say 4% increase in bone mineral density utilizing four commonly available supplements. But since it's not, we'll go to the full published study, which has the title as follows. Melatonin Micronutrients LCP Treatment Study, MOTS, a translational study assessing melatonin, strontium citrate, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, MK7 on bone density, bone marker turnover, and health-related quality of life in postmenopausal osteopenic women following a one-year double-blind RCT and on osteoblast osteoclast co-cultures. That's the published study title. Now, the interesting part about this article or, or the research itself is they also wanted the quality of life. And I would love to basically delve into that as well in regard to the uh, outcome of these four supplements. However, though, we only have so much time, so I'm really just going to focus on the bone mineral density aspects of this. To proceed as follows, the one-year double-blind randomized controlled trial assessed the effects of nightly melatonin, strontium citrate, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2 on bone mineral density and quality of life in postmenopausal osteopenic women compared to the placebo. Here, recall that first graph we showed you, are the results. The MSDK treatment increased bone mineral density in the lumbar spine 4.3% and left femoral neck 2.2%. Those are increases, not a percentage reduction and decrease. Those are actually in increases overall in 12 months utilizing this combination the researchers did the study on. Why did the researchers do this study? And this alludes more to basically the reasoning why they use these four common supplements. The non-pharmacologic recommendation for osteopenia include calcium or vitamin D supplementation, which has proven to be largely ineffective for reducing the incidence of fractures or the prevention of osteoporosis. Also, the combination of calcium plus vitamin D only slightly reduces the risk of hip and other fractures. Most of the existing uh, pharmaceutical bone loss therapies are treatment focused rather than preventative and mainly target further bone loss rather than enhancing new bone formation. A new Non-invasive treatment focusing on bone anabolism during osteopenia would be a critical first step to begin as early as perimenopause for maintaining normal bone integrity and microarchitecture and to prevent future fractures. That's the rationale in regard to the researchers conducting this particular one-year study. All right, a few notes in regard to the study. The average age was about 58.6 between 49 and 75 years of age. It was a small group of individuals, which probably resulted in a lower power rating for those biostatisticians out there, which may be the reason why it wasn't necessarily published publicly for the world to see to start. There was also no conflicts of interest in the study itself, which I also went through the study to make sure there's no COIs, at least none of the reported. 87% of the subjects were already taking either calcium or vitamin D3, multivitamins, and other dietary supplements. Almost all the subjects were healthy sleepers with active lifestyles. Now to proceed. What the researchers utilized in order to retrieve this outcome was as follows. Treatment capsules referred to as MSDK, self-explanatory, were formulated utilizing or using 5 milligrams of melatonin, 450 milligrams of strontium citrate, 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3, and 60 micrograms vitamin K2 divided into two capsules. To conclude with the research, because it's pretty self-explanatory in regards to the, the results as published, in conclusion, combination melatonin, strontium citrate, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2 
significantly increased lumbar spine mineral density by 4.3% and left femoral neck, femoral femoral neck bone mineral density by 2.2%. Again, to reiterate, increases with a trend towards an increase in hip bone mineral density from baseline after one year in postmenopausal osteopenic women. The 10-year vertebral fracture risk probability, this is important, the vertebrae, vertebral, uh, fracture risk probability decreased by 6.48% in response to the MSDK therapy compared to a 10.8% increase in the placebo group. Basically also too, before I conclude out, a few other notes in regard to the study itself. The combination of micronutrients, I'm just taking the excerpt from the study and quoting directly. The combination of micronutrients for bone and a other study prior called comb using strontium citrate and vitamin D3 and K2 was at least as effective as bisphosphonates and strontium renolate at increasing bone mineral density in hip, spine, and femoral neck sites, which is interesting to look at for a lot of people that may have problems taking bisphosphonates. Uh, information like this uh, brought to your medical practitioner could be a value if this option as far as bisphosphonates is not available or not practical. Another cool part, as alluded to in the beginning, the quality of life. Henceforth, this particular chart. The psychometric analysis indicated that mood and sleep quality improved for the MSDK group. As a side note, the COMB study they utilized had a low adherence rate, but however though, with the addition of melatonin uh, and the better sleep and mood factors involved in conjunction with that, they figured that could have contributed to the uh, better adherence rate in regard to this particular study as a far as prior studies just using supplements without melatonin. Again, incredible, incredible results, fast results, not just drawing the line as far as a no more bone density loss, but actually gaining ground and reducing fracture risk on top of that as well, which is just fascinating. Again, DUI citation will be listed to link you to the full published study itself. So if you want to bring to your medical practitioner for further research or review, it is open to you. But in any case, wonderful, wonderful gem of a study, buried, buried, I should say, my pronunciation today are a little off, from the National Center Institute's Biotechnology and Information. So all on the NCBI, I'll link it that, to that direction. Otherwise, thank you very much for listening once again. Hope you find this information of use, and I always appreciate you listening. Look forward to seeing you all in seven days. Catch you then.